Good evening and welcome to Face to Face. Tonight's guest, Ani Onoyo, went from being a mechanical engineer to graphic designer creating products inspired by the Word of God. Her journey is one of daring to gamble at all and risk stability for the adventure of living by faith. Are you ready? Let's get into it. So Annie, thank you so much for coming on the program. I'm really excited about this conversation with you. And I think the first thing I want to talk to you about is your undergrad degree, which is completely different <laughs> from what you are currently doing. So tell yes. us, talk to us about that. Yes, of course. So. My background, um, my undergrad degree was in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it was truly from a place of love and interest. I, <laughs> I've always been someone that loved math and physics and design. And so went into that with undergrad, loved learning what I learned. It was difficult, but it was honestly really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, but coming out of that, I think I, I started with an engineering and operations role and started slowly leaning more into the operations and the process and how it's communicated and that kind of turned all, all the way around back to just <laughs> designing and how communication is a lot about how you design the things you want to yeah. share. So um, full circle moment, but yeah, <laughs> I am not a practicing engineer right. today. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well th tell us a little bit about that because, you know, having graduated as a mechanical engineer, uh, you know, in our conversation, you mentioned, you know, having been interested in, in art. Mm -hmm. So when did that interest um, begin in you and how, as you were even engaging in these other pursuits, were you able to kind of uh, exercise those, those yeah. gifts? Oh, that's such a good question. Uh, honestly, I really feel like art has been a part of my story from childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure a lot of artists will say the same, but um, I was reflecting the other day and even back in elementary school, yeah. um, I would work with uh, some friends and we would doodle people's names and make book mm -hmm. cards and hand them out in class. And there were all sorts of different arts and crafts things I did in elementary school and middle school. And um, of course there were assigned like art classes, but I would take it way beyond the right. art class. And um, even in undergrad, I would, which I think working in engineering, there was a lot of like computers and like yeah. digital designs and 3D models. So then I kind of pivoted from like painting and drawing with right. color pencils <laughs> to creating designs digitally. Yeah. So I would do posters for friends and roommates and we would put stuff up in our dorm and then I would do stuff for my mom to put up in her room. Um, and even like my final year uh, design project, I spent way more time caring about the PowerPoint and how like the presentation, like the final design mm -hmm. versus all the other, you know, intricacies of the project. So, um, yeah, my, my focus has definitely been more about the visual design of what the project is. Even yeah. going through corporate and working with different teams, um, I would always wonder like, okay, if a customer is seeing this, what, where do we want their eyes to go when yeah. they look at this banner or this email ad or, um, you know, a PowerPoint presentation to a VP? Like, yeah. I was always like, okay, where are, we, where are your eyes being drawn to? So yeah. I, I think the focus for just, you know, communicating through some sort of visual medium was always yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, that's definitely been like an underpinning throughout the yeah. years for sure. Yeah. Um, well, tell me a little bit about um, kind of, because for a while your graphic design has been sort of a side gig, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and as of a year ago, you decided to go full force, full on, yeah. <laughs> full time, right? Resign from your job. So tell us what that process has been like and how that's changed from when you were kind of doing it as a, as a side job and now it's your career, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think the first um, just like light bulb moment mm -hmm. was actually a church. Yeah. And I was, um, I used to serve in the tech team and just help out yeah. there because it was just all the tech, the wires, the camera, they were just so <laughs> interesting. Um, and I was staring at the like sermon graphic and I was like, who designs these? They're so cool. They're so fun. Um, and one of the producers um, at the campus at our church that time, 
um, he's like, oh, I, there's actually a whole team that does this. Yeah. Like, come to rehearsal early one Sunday and like we can teach you how we do it. Yeah. And so that's even how I learned how to use Photoshop. Wow. So just seeing people use like art as a main job yeah. in that way, yeah. I think it just started opening my eyes to different creative jobs. Um, and so that was probably maybe 2016 or so. Okay. And so just working more, learning how to use these still tools, still kind of doing things on the side, yeah. but um, during the pandemic, you know, the, the, <laughs> the <laughs> lockdown, <laughs> um, you know, while everyone was baking bread right. and going on extra runs, <laughs> I was like, oh, I need to work more on designs. Right. And right. so really leaned into it then. Yeah. And um, one of my friends from work encouraged me to open up a store on Etsy. Yeah. So she's like, just, you know, you can, you do these posters, you can just sell them as a digital file, like a JPEG. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of practice and a lot of time put into just learning the different avenues that different artists have taken to yeah. create designs. And so I think that's where that really started. So the store for sure started 2020. Okay. Um, okay. And then as time went on, I just felt like God was pulling at my heart. Like, this is a gift you've always loved. You've always yeah. loved art, um, but it's a talent you haven't really prioritized. Like it's yeah. always been in the back burner. It's been kind of like used, but not fully yeah. like poured into. Yeah. So it's like, okay, yeah. let's let's put the plant like to the sun. Let's yeah. pour some water <laughs> in it. Like let's make sure there's fertilizer. Like yeah. let's give it let's give it some more um, to shine. Yeah. And so last year, um, when I made that shift away from corporate, I was like, okay, I do want to take time. Yeah where this is the only focus and yeah. this is the first focus. Yeah. yeah. But since you were talking about it, tell me, you know, how your faith impacts your your current career what yeah. you're doing now. <laughs> tell me what that what that what that's like for you. Oh. You know, a lot of a, a lot of the people that I've talked to here who are creatives, mm. ha, you know, ha, have definitely shared how their relationship with the Lord and their faith mm. has impacted their, you know, creativity in an incredible way. And so, yeah, tell us your story on yes. that front. <laughs> there were, I feel like from the, you know, the producer that taught me how to use Photoshop to the friend at work that even showed me Etsy and like all these digital tools, there were, there were, there was definitely a path that God was mm. like just providing access and information. Yeah. And so in the early days, there were a lot of ideas that I would get. And I would work on it, I would push things out. And I think a lot of artists probably resonate with this <laughs> where you're always worried that an idea is, you're just gonna run out of ideas right. or things <laughs> won't come. So I think that's where the faith piece really yeah. like sticks for the most part, where yeah. I know that a lot of ideas I get are not from me. Yeah. It's not necessarily from like a show I watched or a museum I went to. Like a lot of the ideas I believe are truly from God. Like yeah. I'll wake up and I just, I can almost visualize yeah. the piece or the product. And um, so I think there was a lot of trust where even if there's a moment where I don't have an idea, I know another one will come. Um, yeah. And so um, even I think 2021, 2022, yeah. um, when I made the decision to fully make my store a faith-based store mm -hmm. and to really focus on just Bible inspired projects. Yeah. Um, I feel like that took the faith to the next level. So yeah. now it's like, I'm not just getting an idea for a poster, but I'm, I'm getting an idea for maybe a chapter in the Bible to study. And then yeah. that turns into a whole collection. And so yeah. there's a lot of times where, okay, God will give me an idea. And this is, you know, I'm trusting that he will implant yeah. what and equip me for what I need to do. But then on the other half, it's like, okay, I also need to do my part. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas there's discipline, I have to, I don't want to sleep on the idea or, you know, just keep it shelved away. I want to actually like yeah. work on the talent. Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, that's another of the things that I've been talking to um, other creatives about that the inspiration, right? That's, mm. that's the fun part, I think, yes. as we're getting like <laughs> downloaded from mm -hmm. the Lord, all these ideas, yeah. right? But then the work piece <laughs> that comes along, yes. <laughs> um, you know, how do you, you know, particularly, you know, as tip or, or ways that others who may be watching who are creatives or want to launch their own business or trying to figure out, you know, how can I become disciplined? You know, do you have a specific um, time when you're working? You know, when do you set aside time? Mm -hmm. What are some things that you've learned as a creative as, you've, as you're trying to get your you know, business off the ground or, or implement in practical ways the ideas that the Lord is giving you? 
for your products. Yeah. Um, that's so good. I feel like it's hard at first because I'm sure for a lot of people, you start off part time or you start off where this is like the fourth thing on your list. It's not even number two. It's All like right. so so far down the list. And um, but I do feel like there's a there's a lot of power in scheduling. And there's a lot of our schedules we have agency over and we have yeah. control over that yeah. we just allow life to happen instead of us making that decision to say, no, this this hour a week, mm -hmm. I'm only dedicating to this thing yeah. or 20 minutes at the end of every work day. I'm going to you know watch a YouTube video that teaches yeah. me about X, Y and Z. Yeah. Um, and so I think once I started carving out time in my schedule and I literally would just just put it on my phone, on my Google calendar and be like design time or like Photoshop time or work, work on this one poster. Yeah. Um, and I, I think just making that a priority on your schedule, mm -hmm. somehow it's like your body is like ready for it when yeah. it comes. And there are times where you're not in the creative mode or the idea yeah. of brainstorming, <laughs> things are flying and you're just like, hey, I don't really want to do this. But yeah. as you say that, still open the <laughs> laptop and still at least tinker yeah. with things because yeah. um, there is a lot of power that can just happen in the moment. Yeah. So almost like preparing the space for for God to give you even more direction yeah. on like how you should design. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, tell me about um, because as you know, as we were having our conversation, you mentioned the fact that uh, there are a lot of resources that you made use of. And so for people who are interested and think, well, I can't do this because I have to get a, another degree perhaps mm. on, on that thing, or I have to take classes or I have to spend money. You yeah. know, what were some of the ways in which you um, just, you know, continued to develop your skill to do what you're doing now? Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, first of all, just your network. And so keeping that curiosity open where if you know someone at church that you know, designs bags, or you know someone from your job that like does PowerPoint really well, like humbling ourselves to go and just ask them. I feel like there's, I've been very gen, like very surprised with how nice and open um, and just share, sharing people right. are. Like people just share information. They're just happy to be asked because odds are they're also really passionate about those things as well. Yeah. So they're willing to just teach you. Yeah. Um, so I've gotten a lot of information just from like random coworkers and yeah. just people at church. Um, and then I think for sure, of course, online. So yeah. like there's a lot of um, courses and classes that are shared, but there's a lot of stuff just on YouTube of like, okay, how to start my store or like how to get better at painting and, and things like that. I would say one thing for maybe people that have already started designing or thinking about scaling or like, how do I make it big? And I'm not yeah. just like, you know, handing out things to family members. Yeah. Um, I've used a lot of drop shipping companies, mm -hmm. which I feel like people aren't really aware of where you yeah. can design you know, a product and then partner with like a third party manufacturer to ship it for you. Okay. So, you know, it, for me, while I was working, that took the pressure off of me having to order a hundred t-shirts yeah. and then try and sell it later or order a hundred tote bags and then try and sell it later. And, and it wasn't financial for me at that time to do that yeah. either. So that was yeah. also a nice way to still like offer the world something without yeah. it, you know, hurting me financially too. Yeah. Well, you know, since you, you, you're talking about that, I wanted to talk about kind of the business side of entrepreneurship. Uh, for example, you know, a, a balance sheet, mm. you know, how to <laughs> make sure, right, that you are um, not uh, going in the red yeah. or, or getting yourself into debt as you're so trying good. to build your business. So are there things that, you know, viewers can do uh, to kind of prepare themselves to, to learn about that, that kind of, you know, balance sheets and budgeting yeah. and all that stuff cool. that's part of entrepreneurship and very yes. important part of entrepreneurship. Yeah, oh, that's a good question as well. <laughs> that, I feel like that one's difficult because a lot of the tips I learned was actually working for my company, yeah. like working for the different companies over the year when I was doing the art thing part time and just seeing how bigger corporations save money and, you know, decided how many projects they were even going into at the at the start. So yeah. like I'm always a very start small, you know, mm -hmm. like big faith, but also like <laughs> don't bite more than you can chew. Right. Um, so my first product line was just digital files. So I wasn't even 
paying for any inventory. Okay. I wanted to just see if there was interest out there. So that was more just, you know, I'm the only thing I'm paying for is time. Right. Um, and then even when I started providing actual physical products, I wouldn't order them unless people had already like yeah. placed an order, mm -hmm. they've already paid, then I can use that to go up front. And it's okay. a slower start, but it is a, I, for me, I feel like it is a safer start yeah. where the idea is like when you, when you get that first initial download or idea, it could seem really exciting and really hopeful, but you want it to also be long lasting. So right. um, I don't know, I, I feel like there've been a lot of just friends around that are also really into finance or really into accounting yeah. that have also given me tips <laughs> along the way. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it is a balance. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I love this idea that you're talking about longevity. Mm -hmm. um, and we know a lot of businesses, and I don't know what the percentage is, but a lot of businesses fail within the first, I don't know, two, three years. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it may be as a, because of a lack of inexperience or maybe biting more than you can chew and you realize that you're actually not making a profit uh, from, you know, from the business. And so, um, you know, I know you've, you've already talked about some things, um, you know, for, for you know, entrepreneurs to do in order to ensure that longevity and that they're able to carry this business through for a long period of time. Are there any other things that, that the audience should be thinking about as they're, as they're working on their business to make sure that it does outlast, you know, yeah. however long they want to continue <laughs> doing it? No, that's, that's good. I think as it is right now, and I do, even though I'm just a company of one, I do a <laughs> monthly business review. And so I have a meeting with myself. And sometimes I actually do like, you know, I save the slides and I share it with some of my friends that are like into business or I share it with some family members that are like, they, you know, they just have that kind yeah. of entrepreneurial mindset. Um, but I have a monthly meeting with myself on like, <laughs> what is the state of the business? Is what we're doing working or not working? Yeah. Because there is also a part where you can see the writing on the wall, like the numbers don't lie. You know, I told you I love math. So <laughs> I love going back to numbers and you can see what's selling and what's not. Yeah. And yeah. Um, just kind of humbling yourself to for the things that aren't working to just to close those out um, and really put focus into the things that are working. So I've, I've already shifted different types of designs I've made or different products I've worked yeah. on um, based on how, you know, my customers and my clients are receiving that. And sometimes I think there's a pride there with artists because mm -hmm. everything we create, we right. think it's awesome, we think it's cute. <laughs> it's like, we wouldn't have made it otherwise. Right. Um, or even there are some things where we create it, we don't really think it's awesome, but the audience, like yeah. maybe that's just what God has resonates for the people. Yeah. yeah, and so it resonates. Yeah. And so there are things I've wanted to close and God is like, <laughs> the numbers don't lie. Like this is what yeah. you know the community needs right now. Keep that open. The thing you thought was really cute isn't really working. <laughs> Maybe close that. So yeah, I think definitely you know scheduling time to work, but also scheduling time to like pause and reflect and review um, what your work has, has been. Even if you're just working on something part-time and to the side, I think it's always so you know, worth time to right. just sit and review. Yeah, there's something you said um, a little bit earlier, and, and I want to come back to that because I, I find it really interesting, especially as people are thinking about what they want to do with their lives, even mm. sometimes, right? <laughs> well, I like doing this, or I like doing that. You know, do I want to make this thing my career or that thing? Um, and when you were talking about, um, you know, creating graphic design, how you could spend hours and hours in just the minutest yes. details <laughs> of that communication, that visual communication. Yeah. And so, um, you know, there's a book out there called Flow, and it's basically the state that, um, that we reach when we are so engrossed mm. on a project or an activity that yeah. we lose complete track of time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's an actual thing that happens. And so, um, and I love that because it kind of gives people, I think, you know, a clue as to the thing that you are passionate about. Like, you basically yeah. could spend four hours. On and it doesn't something, feel like four hours. And it four doesn't hours. feel yeah. like four hours. It doesn't feel like four hours. It's just you're in the zone mm. where you are creating or you are writing or you are doing whatever it is that you're doing. And you realize, well, maybe this is what I'm meant to do. So I feel like, you know, people ask the question, you know, is this, 
uh, for me or or is this what I'm meant to do? You know, yeah. what does time feel like <laughs> when you are <laughs> engaged in a particular activity? And that may be a clue perhaps to what you should be doing with your with your life. Um, and so um, I love that you that you talked about that. I just that's a freebie, everybody. Yeah, I like, I'm take, I'm going to take that. Like that's really awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an amazing uh, Mahali chick sent Mahali, and mm. um, I, I won't spell the name for you because it's a it's a very difficult name to spell. <laughs> but he's the one who um, kind of came up with this whole idea of of flow and of people that. entering that flow state. When they're, I've definitely when they're felt super, that. Yeah, for sure. Super engaged in a in a project. So not a question, just kind of. I love it. I think that's great. I think even even just bouncing off of that, because I think some people probably hit a flow state of something that might not even need to be a business. It's yeah, just, you know, they yeah. love gardening. And right, like, right. yeah, that's definitely, when I think about it, I'm like, oh, wow, this person was created to do that. Yeah. Like that, yeah, that yeah. Fills, fills their cup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts or ideas that you may think of that would be helpful for the audience? Um, yeah, I think, <laughs> um, I think something that's probably not said enough is there's so much that's out there um, and it is doable. I don't think it's something that's just reserved for um, the wealthy or the elite or um, those who've gone to school for it. I feel like there's truly a lot of space um, for people to just try. Like, I'm definitely of the yeah. <laughs> mindset that it doesn't hurt to try something at least once, yeah. um, especially if it's something like an idea you've had for years or something that you've thought about and it keeps coming back yeah. up in a cycle. Yeah. I think it's, it is something to pray about and also put some some time on the schedule to do. Yeah. Like there were, I'm so grateful because there were enough people around me that encouraged me to lean into this. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do feel like there was, there could have been a life where mm -hmm. it always stayed in the back burner and there's just so much joy. Um, I feel like I've received from God through this. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do want to encourage other people. If there's an idea that you've always had and you keep watching it more and more episodes <laughs> and you're thinking about it, I was like, it might be time to jump in the in the to deep take, end yeah, yeah to take, take the, the plunge. plunge yeah oh, wow that's really great thank you um i wanted to ask you about the sort of marketing and publicity and actually selling your products mm. and what that has looked like for you since making the transition to full-time you know graphic designer and artist yeah i think the first switch, I went straight for social media. Mm -hmm. I was like, I already had an Instagram. I was like, I have to get on TikTok. I need to get on YouTube Shorts. I need to get on Pinterest. And I think I really was trying to harness the power of social media <laughs> like everyone told me to. Um, and honestly, there was a lot of good engagement. And it let me know, even without people buying things, what people gravitated towards. So there was also like a lot of research I was able to get from seeing how other, what other people were selling and, you know, what was trending at the time yeah. and just different ways that we're creating today versus like 10 years ago. Um, so that was great. Social media, I think, was where I started. Um, but I quickly realized there was a lot of power in just like in-person interactions that I was missing yeah. as well. So even with like Instagram that I've had for a while, um, a lot of the, the sales will come from people that would message me in a DM and then we'd work on like a custom po yeah. poster. And it was like, it was a lot of personal interactions. But then I realized I just completely forgot about like people, I had text, like phone numbers of people that I could text, people I was seeing at church every weekend mm -hmm. that didn't know I was a full-time designer. Um, some, not I'm afraid, some might not know. <laughs> um, um, people from work um, that were also into art or like, you know, friends I went to museums with, like just people I had already known yeah. that were interested in these things or were a part of a community that would be interested yeah. um, that I could go to not just for like learning um, and just like getting help from, but also as clients themselves. Like yeah. there were people that genuinely we're like, I really like this. I would love to buy this from you. Or I like, I would, I like this. I would love to invite you to my conference so you can like bring your products there. Yeah. And so I think even though there's a huge push for digital and I right. love digital. <laughs> um, and this might just be, this might just be for like the younger viewers right. where we're, we probably lean back when it comes to in-person and like, yeah. you know, really, really making that personal connection. Like there's so much um, opportunity there, but then there's also a lot of like just grace and longevity when you actually make yeah. uh, 
personal connections with the people that you're working for, essentially. Yeah. What are some places where you um, physically go to sell your your art and your products? Yeah. So physical is new for me, <laughs> okay. but the first the first show I had was uh, this past spring at the Elevation Conference. So um, it was a two day conference. It was a lot of and it was all centered around Christian musicians. So mm -hmm. different artists. Um, and it was more music artists, but I worked with them and did some operations with them and they allowed me to also show up at yeah. the conference. And so what was really special about it is um, it was a crowd of people who already knew the Bible. They, they're they here because they love the Lord. Like yeah. the content that I'm providing is things that I probably don't have to explain. Right. If I were in like just a community market or a farmer's market, you know, right. in my local town. So that was my first uh show and then just partnering with other companies um there was a retreat with unite boston that, that happened recently and mm -hmm. partnering with them to gift the participants yeah. of the retreat uh some of the products yeah so now i'm working towards a third show mm -hmm. um and that's another music event so that's mm -hmm. a um a music festival here in massachusetts mm -hmm. and it's called soul fest yeah big music festival i think they're on like 20 plus 20 plus yeah, years yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah they are so showing up as a vendor there to just okay. also again their 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 huge mission is about really kind of sharing the gospel mm -hmm. through music and so mine a lot of mine is like sharing the gospel through like you know physical art and a lot yeah. of like words and typography yeah. so showing up as a vendor for that show as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, no, and I just realized as you were as you were talking, because your products are very much uh, geared toward people of faith, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it might, I mean, maybe not necessarily, but it, it might kind of exclude some of the, you know, other um, like farmer's markets and things like that, where people don't necessarily expect to see products bearing, you know, the fruit of the spirit, let's yeah. say, or, <laughs> or Bible verses, etc. Yeah. So has that kind of made it harder for you in some ways? Or, or you think there are other mm. opportunities, there's plenty of opportunities out there within the Christian community to sell your, your products? I'm actively thinking about that right now. Yeah. So I do have some artists that, you know, have encouraged me to do some of the more community shows, secular shows, yeah. farmers market, like just things just that are just open. Yeah. And I think there are other there are other groups, there are other probably religious sects. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of different niches um, yeah. that also show up to farmers markets. And yeah. I think if it's something that, you know, they can show up, we can also show up and kind of it more of in a evangelistic posture. Yeah. Like we're showing up one, there are Christians in our yeah, community. Yeah. So they're, they're, we, I love a farmer's market, so they're yeah. going to be there as well. But it yeah. could also be an opportunity for someone to learn about the gospel. Yeah. So I am thinking about that. But even with just partnering with some of the Christian spaces, I think there is a need for more Christian products. Like we, um, when we think about like, I don't know, shopping for clothes or buying shoes yeah. or, you know, decorating our homes, um, I think it's nice for us to also have an option of yeah. doing that in a way that also um, shows our like love for Christ and shows yeah. the things that are important to us. And if like, for example, fruit of the spirit, <laughs> like if that's, you know, a, a verse that's just been in your mind and it's like a you know, really important verse to you, I think that's also a need that we haven't fully filled yet, yeah. even in yeah. just the Christian spaces. Right. So, and it's a great way for Christians to support Christian, right? vendors and artists yeah. and such so i think it it just it's a it's a win-win <laughs> it's a win-win for sure so i've i've talked to some people from you know different christian organizations or churches and you know that was their first time even hearing of yeah. christian stores on etsy meanwhile i feel like i i know so many people that own right. christian stores on etsy so even in the christian groups it's still so new yeah some of these yeah. different types yeah. of products so yeah. i really feel like i can go either way yeah. i'm just <laughs> Well, and that's, you know, and that's the thing. I think one of the reasons why I wanted to, you know, do this program featuring, you know, artists within the Christian community is because there isn't uh, enough conversation mm. around uh, Christian artists. And so, um, you know, hopefully this is a good platform for you and for the other artists that have come through here. I've just been, you know, amazed, not just you know, the, the amount of talent and the very talent that the Lord, right, has gifted, um, but the ways in which 
you know, each individual artist relationship with God has also um, mm. deepened as they've taken the steps yeah. to move in the gifting that God has given them. And so, Annie, thank you so <laughs> much for coming on the program. Any last words that you want to tell the audience? Oh, this has been such a great opportunity. Thank you so much yeah, for having me. Um, honestly, I think I'll just reiterate back to what I said earlier. Like, the Holy Spirit is so kind and consistent with, um, like, how He just prompts us for things He wants to, like, bring us through and help us in. And so if there's that idea that just won't go away, this might be, this might be the moment yeah. to, like, really, really think about it and see, just see how God... Um, can move it because I mean I'm just a couple years in and already he's blown it like yeah. way beyond <laughs> where I thought it could go and it's just been such a beautiful opportunity so yeah don't negate the small ideas like he will he will speak to you in the small whispers and will still um, deliver more than you can ask for sure amen thank you so much so thank you again for tuning in so I think the big takeaway here is do not be afraid you know, in the Bible, we read so many times God telling us to not be afraid. So if you have an idea for a business, as Annie said, if you something keeps coming back again and again, you've heard from Annie, you've heard from other artists, how God has helped them, you know, as they mm -hmm. trusted him to be able to move in this gifting that he's given them. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.